Hello and welcome to Trail Grazers, where we focus on great, wonderful, delicious meals for the trail. And today we're going to be focusing on a meal that I'm also going to be using in a new book that I'm working on, on uh, nutrient-dense meals. And I'll tell you, since I have been, you know, whenever I do a new book, it's all about testing a whole lot of recipes, and I've been doing that. And because nutrient density means low calories and high nutrition, particularly high protein, then um, it's really good for weight management. And Jim and I, both of us, we were talking about it just a few minutes ago uh, with these meals that I've been um, practicing on. Um, we have both lost weight, so it's pretty exciting. In any case, we're going to prepare them for car meals. We have some car trips coming up, and uh, this will be perfect for that. So no freeze drying, no dehydrating, just fixing this meal and putting them in the little sectioned containers and in the refrigerator for when we um, go on our car trips. I want to remind you that today is the last day for our Big Birthday Bash book sale, 20% off all books. Um, and the link to the bookstore, I'll put it right here. It's on our, uh, it's listed under Rose Red Homestead, but it goes for Trail Grazers as well. And then the last slide of this video, you can just aim your camera right at the QR code for the bookstore and it will just take you right there. So today we are going to do pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin is a very lean meat, which makes it nutrient dense because it is lean protein that we're after when we look for um, high nutrient density because it's low calories, very lean. Now that creates some problems. This is a little muscle in the hog that is rarely used. Um, it's very easy to overcook because it is so lean. Um, without the marbling of the fat throughout, the heat transfer is very fast. And so it can overcook just about in a heartbeat and be tough and dry and chalky. Um, also, it is very, very mild. Some people would even think it's quite bland. But what if we could solve the problem with overcooking and the, the possibility of it being too bland by a different way of cooking? Well, that's what we're going to do today. We are going to sous vide. Sous vide is French for under vacuum. And um, while I don't do it totally under vacuum, a lot of people do, uh, we will get all the air out of the bag for cooking. And here is the thing, if you are not familiar with sous vide cooking, I just did a video over on Rose Red explaining it as well, and I will link that video to the end of this video. But here is my setup for sous vide. I just use a regular kitchen uh, pot that I have. This is one of my bread making containers. Uh, it's a Cambro container. This is a six quart size. I also have 12 quart size, which you'll see if you look at that other video. And then this little gizmo is a a sous vide cooker. It is an immersion cooker and it does two things. You may be able to tell that the water is circulating and so it, it circulates the water to keep the temperature even and it heats it up. And so I have dialed in 140 degrees and you can probably see that right here. What is the temperature right now? 138.6. We are almost there. We're almost to 140. By the time we get this ready to go, um, it will be up to 140. And then what we do is we just put it in. Uh, I use a baggie. You can buy specialized equipment. The only specialized equipment that you really need is this little cooker. And there are several brands. I've had this one for five or six years, and I used it a little bit at first. But my job when I was at the university was so tense and so demanding, I just didn't get into it. Well, I am into it now because it is a fabulous way to cook high-density meals. Um, the Anova brand is, by every place that I read, the top brand for a sous vide cooker, which means, of course, that it has gone up quite a bit since we bought it five or six years ago. But I put the newer version of this one up in our Amazon store, and you know that we never put anything in our Amazon store that we haven't tried out ourselves. 
but also know that there are other brands, other makes of the sous vide cookers that are not as expensive. And so you can just do your research and figure out what you would like to have if you decide to go this way. So the meat has to be vacuum sealed or vacuum packed. All the air has to be removed so that the heat can transfer directly from the water through the container to the meat. And then it slow cooks that meat for about an hour, maybe two hours. But guess what? You can leave it in there for, uh oh, it just beeped so it is ready. Uh, you can leave it in for as long as you wish because it's not going to overcook. It is going to hold it at 140 degrees and it won't get any more done. That's it. That is the beauty of it. So we won't overcook it. So this is vacuum sealed. So you could just drop this container as is right down in that water and cook it as well. But I want to add some aromatics to it to give it a little bit more flavor. Now you can buy these and this is a one pound um, pork tenderloin. You can buy these that are pre-seasoned and that would be ideal just to drop right in there. But we're going to season it ourselves. So I'm going to take it out of this container, break the vacuum, and I've just washed my hands and I'm going to salt it quite liberally. and pepper it. And then we're going to get it in the bag. So here it is. Now, because I want to add some flavor, I just went out to my herb garden and I have a couple of sprigs of rosemary. So I'm going to put them in, one on top, one on bottom. And I have a couple of sprigs of oregano and I'm going to do the same. And here is some lemon balm. I love a little hint of lemon. So I'm just going to pull off some of these leaves. Some of the leaves don't look very good so I'm not going to use them and just put them in as well. And now we're going to get as much air out as we possibly can and I'm going to do that by rolling it. And then snapping it closed. So it's as vacuum sealed as it needs to be, I think but you can buy special bags and vacuum seal it with your vacuum sealer if you have one. So now it's up to temperature, so I'm just going to submerge it in this water, making sure that it's down all the way, close pinning it in place. There we go. Now, that's all there is to it. And so it's gonna cook like that for an hour. I can leave it in there. The uh, directions that I found online said between one and four hours. And cooking it at 140 yields a medium doneness. It will still be a little bit pink in the middle and I don't mind that because it's sous vide. It's a very healthy and safe way to cook because everything will get there, uh, will get to 140 degrees and be held there. And so it's very safe to eat it, even if it's a little bit pink. All right, now what we're going to do next is get the second thing for our meal ready, and that would be the potatoes. So I'm going to get set up for that, and I'll be right back. I have about three quarters of a pound of new red potatoes. I've cut them in half, and they are in this bowl. I'm now going to grate the zest from one lemon. And I'm going to put a tablespoon of olive oil. Now this used to be fancy olive oil, but I really like the dispenser, so I saved it once the fancy olive oil was done, and I just fill it with regular olive oil. And a couple of tablespoons of the cheese, which I should have done before the olive oil, but we're just gonna make it work. And this is grated Romano and Parmesan cheese. 
and then a sprinkle of pepper. And of, I'm going to use garlic salt. And then I'm just going to stir this all together. Make sure that the olive oil is coating all the potatoes. Ooh, these look so yummy. They smell wonderful, wonderful. This is what it looks like when everything is all mixed up. I have some fresh parsley that I will be mincing. Uh, this is from my herb garden, and I will put that on after the potatoes are done. Now, we can either spread these out on a baking sheet and bake them in the oven. You can put them in a um, cast iron skillet with a little bit of butter, warm that butter, kind of brown them a little bit and finish them off in the oven. I'm choosing to do it today in my air fryer. So I'm just going to put all of these potatoes down in one of the air fryer drawers, spreading them around so they are a single layer. And I will put these on the air fryer setting for 15 minutes. And while we are waiting for the potatoes to get done, we're going to put together a quick little salad. And here we go with the salad. Now, first of all, I want to show you the containers that I'm going to be using. These are bent go boxes. Uh, each of these holds one cup, and this section holds two cups. So I have to think ahead of time and plan what I'm going to put in which section, knowing that these are going to go in the refrigerator and will be in the refrigerator for a few days. Also knowing that I'm going to be packing foods that will need to be warmed up as well as foods that need to stay cold. So how will I do that? Well, we're going to try out a couple of things. First of all, I'm thinking that the salad is going to need to go right here because there will be enough room in this one and in this one for the... Um, I'm going to cut the tenderloin in medallions and I will cut it in four different servings. And so I believe that they will fit in one of these and then I believe I can get enough potatoes in the other one to do it that way. Now my thinking is that when I open up the refrigerator and pull out, and by the way, they're in two colors because this is Jim's color. He eats more than I do so I can portion things accordingly, and this is my color. So it works out really well that way. And because we will most likely want to heat up the meat and the potatoes, but not the salad, we will be taking with us in our car, our little car oven, because it's a very simple thing to do. So I'm just going to make up the salads right now, and I'm going to put them in a little baggie. This is just baby spinach. These are tomatoes, pre-washed tomatoes, and I'm leaving the stems in to keep them from um, going bad. These are from our vines, and they've been washed, so I'm going to drop in four tomatoes. I'm going to drop in, oh, three or four radish rounds, and a lemon wedge. And that's just going to be a little salad, a little bit of cool taste. And um, then we always travel with salt and pepper. So let's see. Okay, that's going to fit perfectly right there. So I'm going to finish up these salads, and then we'll be back. Salads are done. And um, in some of these, they have one tomato that's a little bit larger. Um, so not cherry tomatoes that you can just pop right in your mouth. So on the morning that we leave, I will pull this tomato out and quarter it so that it can be just a bite size. So now we are waiting for the potatoes to get finished and for the pork to get finished. So we will be back when we are ready to add that to our meal boxes. I'm dodging the sun because it makes everything look ridiculous. Here's how the potatoes turned out. And uh, Jim and I split one, and they are fantastic. I snipped the uh, fresh parsley over the top, so we're now ready to get these in. And I'm just going to put a few in each one of these containers. Next up is the tenderloin, and it will be done. I'll be checking it in about five minutes, and we'll bring you back when we are ready to do the last step to it, which is to sear it. I just checked our meat, and it is done. So I'm going to turn it off. There we go.
and I'm going to lift it out leaving the juices behind. If we want to use the juice we can. There's not a lot of juice. Right now what I want to do is to peel off the aromatics. Ooh, it smells wonderful. And I'm just going to pat it dry. Because it just looks kind of ugly right here, in order to look appetizing, we do need to sear it. And um, unless we were just going to uh, cut it up in small pieces and chunk it and use it for sandwiches or something like that, where the browned crusty edges don't matter. But this time we're not going to do that. Our meal is going to consist of little rounds cut like this across the tenderloin. And so we want it to be uh, lovely. And so I am melting just a little bit of ghee. Now ghee has a very high smoking point, much higher than butter. I would not use real butter. I would use, um, this is ghee, which has the milk solids um, removed from it. Now the tenderloin is completely done. I, I checked the temperature. It is 140 on the inside. So as soon as this gets hot, almost to smoking, we are going to sear it. And I may put the aromatics back in to help uh, with giving it more flavor. I may just leave them out. I don't know. We'll kind of see how it goes. We want it to get that little nice little brown crust on it. All right, now we're going to just let it cool enough to where we can cut it. So we will be back when we're ready to cut it and put it in the refrigerator dishes. Here we go. Look at this gorgeous meat. It is pink in the middle. You can see it's a little pink runoff there. So I have three that I'm going to be putting in each of these containers. Oh, let's see, Jim's is on this other side. He gets the larger end. And then these will be mine. Tiny ones and then just another little piece here. Okay. So now we are going to do a taste test. Oh my gosh, it's so tender. Oh my goodness. It's phenomenal. It's tender. It's juicy. It's very tasty. There's a lot of flavor here. I'm just thrilled. And so I'm going to save a few little bites here for Jim as well. Now, the way these are packaged, we can just pull this out and put them in our little car heater or if we decide, our car oven rather, if we decide that we want to just eat one of these meals at home, then I can just pop this in the microwave and add the salad with some salt and pepper and we'll be done. So I'm thrilled with these, absolutely thrilled. Now, if I'm wanting to do like a dinner meal, these would be more for lunch. I would increase the tenderloin to instead of one pound of the tenderloin, it would be a pound and a half. And, um, I would do a full pound of potatoes instead of three quarters of a pound of potatoes to um, beef up the meal. Well, pork it up a little bit, I guess, is a better way to say it. Um, and I just calculated the, the calories on this using the way that I'm doing for my new book. And it's under 400 the way it is now. If we added the extra potatoes and the extra meat, it would be just under 500, which is not bad for an evening meal at all, given that the protein amount is way high and it has other, has lots of other nutrients in it as well. So these are going out in the fridge 
and we will be on a car trip very soon and we will take you with us and this may be the meal that we have along the way. So thank you for being with us so much. We appreciate you. Please share the channel with other people who are interested in good food on the trail and we'll see you out there on the trail, we hope really soon.